as usual for doing anything these seminars. So today we have um, Liam, he is, this, this was, was your, your master's, master's research, research, is that correct? correct? Yeah. yeah, that's correct. Um, and he studied forest elephant behavioral ecology. And I think this is especially exciting because um, in Akagera, there's a, um, a project starting up with, there was a position posted for um, an intern to study elephants and the center is helping coordinate that with um, African parks and the woman uh, Tammy Matson, who had so this is nice to hear you speak, and uh, maybe even you could mentor the help mentor the intern <laughs> so <laughs> we get started uh, for Akagera because um, we'd love to see more Rwandans get involved in this kind of research with elephants. So um, yeah, and I just want to mention also that Liam is in Rwanda now, right? You're you're in Rwanda mm -hmm. now. Yeah, she, he's with, um, his partner is Megan Sullivan, who's um, a Fulbright um, fellow or scholar with the center for um, a year. And we've really been benefiting from having Megan with us. And then we're so appreciative that Lee and you, you came to join her and we hope to take advantage of your presence as well. Uh, so I hope all of you get to meet Liam. Um, while he's here as well. And I know many of you have benefited already from Megan's presence. So with that, I want to turn it over to you, Liam, and encourage people to put your questions and comments as they come to you. You can put them into the chat. And then at the end of the presentation, huh? we will um, open it up and you can talk directly to Liam or we can take your questions and comments from the chat. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, so, I am a current PhD student at the University of Colorado Boulder, and I'm presenting work that uh, fulfilled my master's thesis, which I just graduated in December, uh, so it's still pretty fresh. And I was studying forest elephant behavioral ecology in a forest savanna mosaic ecosystem. Uh, so part of my goals for this project were to look at how group size and composition changes across the landscape and throughout time, looking at the effects of habitat resource availability, season, and time of day. Um, and I thought that this information could help to inform the life history of this species. We don't know a lot about forest elephants overall. Um, it could help reveal some of the drivers of fish and fusion behavior, which is a very unique behavioral mechanism among elephants. Um, it could also help to predict their movement and behavior and then outliers that are most in need of protection uh, throughout their route. Uh, so I'm going to break this talk up uh, much like I did my master's thesis into two chapters. I'll have a brief introduction on forest elephants, the study site I was working in, and drivers of fish and fusion behavior. And then my first chapter focuses on the influence of habitat on forest elephant group size. My second chapter focuses on the drivers of this fish and fusion dynamics, forest elephants. And then I'll conclude with some implication and further research. So first off, I'd like to talk a bit about forest elephants. Uh, elephants are a newly recognized species, Loxodonta cyclotus, uh, and they are now one of three uh, living species of elephant, along with the African savanna elephant, the Asian elephant, and now the African forest elephant. Um, and we don't know a lot about them because it's only recently, for the past decade or so, that uh, molecular evidence and more uh, evidence of their morphology has suggested that they are a separate species from savanna elephants. Originally, they were just considered a subspecies of African elephant. Um, and this is even so recent that it was only in 2020 that the IUCN recognized them as um, and with this uh, designation, they become recognized as critically endangered and savanna elephants as endangered. Uh, so this is a critically endangered species, but we don't know a lot about them uh, because uh, there hasn't been a lot of research done on them up until this point. Uh, they are mostly found in uh, the Congo Basin and West Africa. So this is highlighted in green and then the range of savanna elephants are in gray, so more in Eastern and Africa. And uh, one of the things that you may notice about the forest elephant range is that uh, it takes place almost entirely within this Congo Basin rainforest, uh, which is composed of very dense vegetation. And so this is an example of some of the habitats that they live in. 
and it is much more difficult to study and observe elephants in these dense tropical forests than it is in the open grasslands of eastern and southern Africa, where a lot of research has been done on African savanna elephants. Uh, so because of uh, most of the studies of forest elephant groups have been done at forest clearings known as bays, and this is Zangabai and in the Central African Republic, where a lot of long-term studies of forest elephants have been done. Um, and so bays function as social arenas where multiple forest elephant groups join together. Uh, this is Longwe Bay in Gabon, uh, and these observation platforms where they will see elephants entering and leaving the bay and forming larger groups in these bay environments. Um, but this does not represent how forest elephants uh, behave throughout their uh, habitats, and so it's kind of this unique case. Um, where I was studying elephants was Wonge Presidential Reserve in Gabon, and I was curious to see if uh, these uh, four savanna mosaic ecosystems, which Wonga Wonga was one of them, uh, also function at, at arenas a lot like bys do uh, in more dense forest. Uh, so a bit more about my study site. Um, this is Africa. Uh, this is Gabon, uh, which is on, on of Africa. Um, and then within uh, Gabon, you can see Wangwange Presidential Reserve, also on the western coast, in between the two largest cities of Libreville and Port Chanty. And what you can see clearly in the satellite photo of the reserve is these very clearly delineated uh, savanna areas. So there's the central uh, savanna and then the coastal savanna areas. And why there's this very clear distinction between them is because the uh, savannas annually by uh, the park managers. This is a tradition that has gone back to uh, indigenous people living in the reserve, but then has also occurs naturally uh, with lightning strikes that will burn the savanna. Um, but in burning the savanna, it helps to uh, kill all trees, colonizing uh, from the outside and help preserve these savanna ecosystems. So now I want to look a little bit at the drivers in fusion dynamics. Uh, and fission fusion societies uh, are those uh, of very highly social animals uh, where their group size and composition changes throughout time and space. Um, and there's not many uh, animal groups that do this, but uh, some of them are the three extant species of elephants. And so what this means is just that groups fusion, so they merge together and then split apart in fissioning. So they're able to uh, different environmental stressors. Um, now in savanna elephants, they form these very large matriarchal herds, um, which are composed of these much smaller, more cohesive units. So they have a complex hierarchical society where these large clans are then formed as smaller extended family units uh, even smaller, closer family units, and then uh, at this base is this mother calf unit. A piece of base of this vision fusioning uh, society. Uh, now, forest elephants form much smaller groups, and the most common group size is just these mother calf pairs, uh, occasionally slightly larger uh, family groups. And so, uh, I wanted to look at what was causing this difference between these two uh, elephant species and their group size behavior. Um, now, when we're looking at optimal group size, um, it's there are different stressors that lead to larger or smaller group sizes. Um, forcing a group size to be larger is intergroup competition or competition between groups and risk of predation. These stressors will lead to larger group size overall. And then intergroup competition or competition within a group will lead to a smaller group size. Uh, so when looking at savanna elephants, they are their group size is mostly influenced by water availability and predation risk. And so both of these kind of lead to a larger group size overall. They uh, seek out these uh, ephemeral water sources, but once they find them, there's enough to sustain a very large group of elephants. And then also having larger groups can help against predation from predators of young elephant calves that occur in these habitats. 
But um, in forest elephants, they don't have any natural predators, at least in Wonga Wonga, where we worked, and water is very uh, abundant throughout their range. So what could be leading to these smaller groups? And one of the hypotheses is that it's led by fruit availability. Um, now, in uh, many primate groups where they've done studies on their group size, they found that group size increases with greater fruit abundance. Um, but in uh, the fruiting trees can be very quickly depleted by a large group of elephants. A single elephant can eat as much as a thousand fruits in one day. And so this might lead to more competition within groups for these patchily distributed fruiting resources. Um, so if we revisit this optimal group size model uh, in the savanna, it's kind of this balance between uh, with not a lot of stressors leading to a smaller group size overall. Uh, but then in the forest, this increased competition for fruit could lead to a decreased optimal group size, as well as the removal of the predation risk and other stressors leading to a greter optimal group size. Uh, so now I'd like to talk about the first chapter of my research, which is the influence of habitat. Um, and so this was done in the Wongongue Presidential Reserve uh, by following these colored elephants. Uh, we were uh, following the elephants to look at their social behavior as well as collecting information on their diet and habitat. But at the same time, I would see many uh, forest elephant groups that weren't colored. I would collect information on all of the individuals in these elephant groups. Uh, so for each individual, I would age them based off of this aging rubric of uh, because elephants have a deterministic growth, you can age young ones based on their height relative to an average adult female. Uh, so usually their mother in this case. So um, up to five years, they'll be less than half the height of the mother. Between five and 10 years, they'll be up to 75% the size of the mother. And then uh, after that, they can be considered as adult, at least for uh, this very rough survey. And then I also tried to age or uh, sex all of the adult elephants, uh, which is just based on general head morphology and genitalia, if they're visible. Um, so then from this, I categorize all of the groups into different group types. Uh, so there are solo males, solo females, multi-male, multi-female, male-female, female immature, and then male mixed groups, which are male-female immature groups. Um, but there are three groups that were kind of the most common, and that's just these solo male groups, female immature groups, and then these mixed groups. Um, so after I did this, uh, we found that there were many more smaller groups overall. We found a max group size of 16, but this was only observed twice, and average group size was around 2.5. Uh, these are all the locations that we observed for elephant groups throughout uh, Wangwonge. Um, and so I ran a generalized linear mix model uh, with a Poisson Rift distribution uh, with group size as the predictor variable. And then uh, of these various uh, or uh, group size as a response available of these various predictors, the top model had habitat, time of day, and season as the predictors. Uh, so this is the model that we used for this uh, research. Um, we had hour and month split up as uh, two polynomial variables to look at some of the cyclical effect of time of day and season. Um, and we found that there was overall greater group size in savanna than in the forest. Um, we found that the, uh, group size was larger later in the day than earlier in the day. Uh, and while the season variable the group size tends to be larger in uh, the long dry season <laughs> <still laughs> year around uh, June. <laughs> <to August. laughs> um, and the, uh, we did a multinomial with group type <laughs> the response and the same. <laughs> and for this model, the top model was uh, with uh, habitat and season as the predictor bear. Um, so just briefly looking at this, uh, cool to look at categorical full variables as but we did see that there were some groups that were more in the forest, like the female infant groups, the male female 
groups and female female groups and then larger mixed groups as well as solo in, in uh, the savanna. And there's also some degree of seasonality, but it kind of uh, varies wildly mm -hmm. among the different group types. I want to look more, more in detail about these uh, for, uh, fission fusion dynamics and what could actually be causing this difference between the two habitats. Um, so for this, I went back to Wong and, and the reserve did aerial surveys with WCS, and we found uh, we were able to take some elephant groups if they were close enough. Then I also set up camera traps in the forest uh, along forest elephant trails, uh, set in video mode to capture all of the individuals that would pass by. Uh, and we also conducted uh, fruit transects. Uh, the previous year uh, to look at when fruit was most abundant and in Wonga mm -hmm. it's mostly azuga or psychoglobus canensis. That's the primary fruit that fruits during it all again that August. Out of time. Uh, this time I had a more robust aging rubric. So it's based on the same idea that uh, elephants get larger as they get older but including some other characteristics uh, that you can kind of learn to identify uh, for these like larger adult categories to uh, split them up into more fine categories. So to give you an idea of what this looks like, for some of the aging categories, so the inf again being very small, adolescence being a bit larger. <laughs> Uh, science classes are based mainly on the characteristics like the caving in of the skull, um, being able to see the ribs and uh, the length of the tusks, uh, things like this. Um, so uh, after I had all of this information, then did a generalized linear model with distribution, again with group size as a response, but this time with predictors of distance to stream, fruit abundance based on the uh, fruit transects and distance to forest edge to see if there's some as well. We also ran further models sub victory between these two habitats. Um, so what we found overall is that uh, group size was much larger a savanna than in the forest, uh, around 32% larger. Um, we found that groups were larger later in the day with a one point pace per hour uh, in both habitats. Um, we found that groups larger further from streams with around a 34% increase longer, uh, from We found that groups were smaller with around a 25% decrease per hour uh, in both habitats. Um, but <laughs> Very had a difference in response well, uh, as a increase in uh, group size by 1.6 percent. It's actually a decrease in the forest, um, and so it could be fruit abundance that driving this great of uh, the larger or smaller group size in savanna versus forest habitats as well. Um, so then I also ran a model with uh, the percentage of males. So we had percentage of males as the uh, response variable, and then again, ran it with the same predictor variables. And we found that uh, time of a 3.8% low percentiles in all habitats. Uh, there had since the forage a significant factor with a 70% increase in percentage of per kilometer from the forest edge. Um, and that with fruit abundance, there, it was a forest with an increase in the percentage of males with increased fruit and a decrease in the savanna. So again, kind of this uh, paradoxical effect. And uh, 
interestingly, if you compare this uh, group size model versus the percentage of males model, um, a lot of the effect the inverse. So it also seems like as the group larger, the percentage of males is getting uh, small. Uh, other way to think, think of this, males that are more common uh, in the when there's more kind of cause difference in here. Um, and then if uh, optimal group size model, then we can see that there's some support increased intra-group competition for uh, fruiting uh, fruit availability in the forest as uh, leading to this decrease in the optimal group size overall. Um, so some conclusions from both of these chapters were that uh, forest elephant group size, uh, they form fission fusion groups that vary based on their habitat. So the larger groups in the savanna than in the forest, they vary with time of day. So again, larger groups later in the day um, we see a microhabitat effect. So uh, groups is specifically at this forest edge, which makes me think that this uh, forest boundary is a really important habitat and kind of where these groups are coming together. I also see in effect group mobility. So again, this paradoxical effect of a larger group size in the smaller size forest with increased fruit and uh, decrease in group size the further they are from water. And some implications from this are that um, I think savannah's important habitat may function in a size as these social arenas. And because of this effect of how they're used by fans, I think savannah habitat should be preserved in the same way that by habitats are. Uh, we should also look at how uh, forest elf group composition is changing these habitat, uh, specifically looking at social network analysis and things like this to look at how throughout time instead of just patterns overall. Um, so I'd like to thank you for my time as well as all of my collaborators and funding sources. And at this point, I'll take any questions that you may have. Thanks so much, uh, Liam. And uh, I don't see any questions in the chat, but um, we invite people to unmute and ask any questions you'd like here. Um, well, well, sometimes people take, wondering, mm -hmm. um, you have any thoughts about um, what might be going on on like the application or um, findings and takeaways from your research to uh, the context of Akagera National mm -hmm. Park, where it's quite different, you know, where you have a, a fenced uh, area and um, yeah, the elephants were, were brought into the site. And of course they're not Nah, I considered forest elephants, but I'm just wondering if you could mm -hmm. make some maybe hypotheses or predictions about about that location. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, I think I'd be interested to see um, if anyone has done similar research uh, on savanna elephants in habitat. It seems like uh, savanna elephants don't eat like for a large part of their diet. It doesn't seem like that would be as for in the way as it is for forest elephants. But uh, maybe if there's like more high quality browse in some areas than in others, then that could lead to a similar effect happening. Uh, and the habitat in Akagura mm -hmm. is very heterogeneous. You know, you do have these more like swampy areas. You have these open grasslands. And so I'd be interested to see if a similar uh, fusion fusion and not always in these yeah. large herd. And so like what's causing them to sometimes be in the open and then other times uh, split into these smaller groups. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, are there any questions or comments about anything that Liam presented? Hi Liam, um, this was such a really interesting talk. So thank you for 
um, joining today uh, and exposing us to something from a different area of Africa. Um, I was just curious. I thought it was really interesting that you said that there's no natural predators in in the park where you worked, and I'm curious if that's because predators have been extirpated from that area. Been predators um, uh, in that area that would prey on elephant, and if there is that something that's similar across or elephants that these this would be something that you would a dynamic that you would see in other areas where there might be a impact of uh, availability on fish and fusion dynamics because is have more of course elephants in this area. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm curious how uh, time over space uh, uh, modulus that is. Yeah. Uh that's actually um, so in Wangawange, there have never been any uh, large predators of elephants. So it's usually just lions and um, I believe some other large cats. There has been like one account of a leopard taking uh, an elephant calf, but it's rare enough that it doesn't seem to be a cause for concern. So that's the only uh, like possible predator, at least in Wangawange. Um, and I think that's a common thing uh, throughout a lot of the forest elephants range. So if you look at a lot of the Congo Basin forest, I found there aren't a lot of these large predator species. Um, but I think they could be more common, uh, like in these forest savanna mosaic habitats. Uh, so I know there's some larger predators uh, in like the Pato Bateke area of Gabon uh, leading into Republic of Congo. And I think also in some of their range throughout Western Africa. A more big cat species that could be predators, but I think that's definitely could be one of the reasons that they have this smaller group size that they don't need to predators. Any other questions or comments from any of you students I see here? Um, yeah, even about any of the methods that he, uh, Liam used. All right. We've got to get our young researchers used to being brave and asking questions. <laughs> All right. Um, well, thank you again for taking time to um, come and talk to our group. Um, that was really, really interesting. And I, I really appreciate seeing the application of the foraging theory ideas, because indeed, that's a lot of what um, we use in the primate world with primate ecological studies. So that was nice to see mm -hmm. the applications with elephants and forest elephants. Um, so thanks again for your time. Thanks for um, all the people that um, attended and um, stay tuned for next week. I'm sure Vinat has somebody else great lined up. So everybody, I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thank you.